Duncan. Let me ask you something. On a scale of one to 10, what do you think you are? As it gets warmer this time of year, I can't help but get excited for summer. And as a kid who grew up in Massachusetts, there's no movie that encapsulates summer more for me than 2013's The Way Way Back. The film, written and directed by Jim Rash and Nat Faxon, is one of my very favorite movies of the past five years. If you're not familiar, it's about a boy named Duncan who accompanies his mom and her boyfriend Trent to Trent's beach house near Cape Cod for summer vacation. At first, Duncan, who's a pretty awkward and reserved young teen, struggles to feel comfortable in his new environment. But after meeting the manager of the local water park and picking up a job there, Duncan starts to come into his own. Now, if that story sounds run-of-the-mill, that's probably because it is. A movie about a teenage boy coming of age under the guidance of a sympathetic role model isn't exactly groundbreaking in its cinematic storytelling. But to make up for this, the movie is elevated by its acting, setting, strong characters, and perhaps most importantly, its soundtrack. And while I absolutely love Rob Simonson's original score for this movie, which you're listening to right now and I listen to all the time, I'm referring specifically to the original motion picture soundtrack and the compilation of lyrical songs heard in the film. These days, countless movies pick a collection of well-known songs and place them over scenes with almost no purpose. Take, for example, the opening scene of Suicide Squad, where the majority of tracks are arguably played more for audience hat-tipping instead of moving the plot forward. Conversely, this movie's soundtrack is not just complimenting the movie, it's bringing it to another level entirely. Just like the screenplay by Academy Award winners Rash and Faxon, the soundtrack tells a story. And that's why I think it's one of the best in modern movie history. Each song on the Way Way Back soundtrack mirrors or enhances what is happening on the screen or foreshadows what is yet to come. So in this video, I want to highlight 11 tracks used in this movie in sequential order, pointing out their significance and parallels to the story, so that hopefully you can appreciate the Way Way Back soundtrack as much as I do. You up for that, buddy? The opening tune is For the Time Being by Eddie Brickle and the Gadabouts. We hear the line after learning that Duncan isn't fine for the time being. Just look at his face here. When he says, I don't know. Whoa. But yet, when asked to rank himself on a scale of 1 to 10, he gives himself a 6. An average, alright number. He tries to convey that he's totally fine and doing alright for the time being. And even Trent calls him out on this. Well, since I've been dating your mom, I don't see you putting yourself out there, bud. Meeting kids your own age? And from what your mom tells me, you just seem content to hang around her apartment? But the truth is, Duncan is anything but content. So it's nice to see the music is being utilized with purpose right off the get-go. Trent thinks he has Duncan psychologically pinned, but as said in the song, Next up is my favorite song on this soundtrack. Not only is Kiri a total jam, it's probably the most symbolic song used in the film. Mr. Mr. lead singer Richard Page described his song Kiri as a prayer, as the words Kiri eleison are Greek for Lord have mercy. Knowing that, listen to these lines from the chorus. I just love the establishment of the upcoming journey for Duncan. This summer from hell is the road that he must travel, and he's got to escape his own darkness to really start living, which, thanks in large part to Owen, he does. Another little tidbit I love here is Joan misunderstanding the lyrics, and I sort of see it as the adults in Duncan's life being totally blind to what this teen is going through. Wait, 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 whoa, 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 hey, 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 are you... Are you saying carry a laser? That's what it is. Why would anybody write a song called carry a laser? Because they like outer space. <laughs> oh, oh, okay. <laughs> Later, Young Galaxy's Come and See plays as Duncan ventures out yet again and gets a lay of the land at Waterwiz Water Park. And he's led into the park with this line. Is 
this coincidence or connection? This nicely alludes to the growing connection between Duncan and Owen, which is able to develop because Duncan, who finally acts on his dissatisfaction, goes to see what else the world has to offer. Hey, easy, easy. The car's just the right amount of shitty. Now this song choice may seem simple. Owen sees Duncan as young blood. But in a moment towards the end of the film, we learn that the song choice is a bit more symbolic than that, as the water park owner has taken a particular interest in Duncan because Owen had similar socialization. So rather than see Duncan go his whole life feeling totally worthless, Owen decides to take Duncan under his wing and teach the young blood a thing or two about life. Man's got some soul. You got lucky. Next up is Duncan's first day of work, and the next song on the soundtrack is New Sensation, which immediately follows a scene where Duncan is empowered by Owen for the first time, and taught that people will listen to you when you have something important to say. Hey, look at me. You got your shirt on now. You're official. I'm gonna listen to you. He's also taught another lesson. Once you show people you're willing to do something, you may find some help along the way. After he tries and kind of fails to dance, everyone around Duncan starts cheering him on and helping him, so that he can get better. This leads into an incredible montage where Duncan's self-confidence continues to grow. This self-confidence is his new sensation. The song also connects right into a scene towards the end, where a verse is basically reenacted on the screen, but I'll get back to that. On the surface, Young at Heart is a generic party song, but this ties into Owen's eternal state of youth. After all, it plays right before Owen interrupts a heartfelt moment with a superstar. Seriously! My doctor said not to get water on my face! This further is supported by the next song choice, by Eli Paperboy Reed, appropriately celebrating the liberation a child feels during recess, comparable to the last night of fun Duncan has before his departure. Now, when September came around last year for me, I was reminded of that in-between feeling that it brings. It's the month where we've still got a little glimpse of summer left, but it's clearly coming to an end, just like the movie is in this moment. Now, this song takes a turn and is a bit more reflective for the soundtrack. When it plays, Caitlin talks to Owen about regrets, an idea that's revisited constantly in the way, way back. I just don't want to look back and regret that it should have only been one summer. And now, here's the scene I mentioned earlier, when Duncan and Owen are having their heart-to-heart. -heart. Let's flash back to that verse from New Sensation and play it over this scene, where the teen lets out all of his built-up frustration. Good to go. Thank you. I think you are great. You are. <laughs> Next on the soundtrack is Apache Relay's Power Hungry Animals, starting off with that line about Duncan's youthful confusion about where to go in life, about everyone telling him what to do and he can't choose. The rest of the song is talking about breaking away from those societal norms and the pressures others put on us to be something that we're not. But like the song says, souls cannot be fooled. And when Duncan realizes this, he acts on it. Also, was I the only one who thought of Michael Scott yelling for Pam Beasley in this moment? Pam! 
The last song that plays before the credits is Alone by Trampled by Turtles. At first, it can apply to the time spent between Owen and Duncan, specifically Duncan, who comes into the viewer's world alone and almost leaves it in the same way. But the kicker is that this song is also perfect for the mother and child relationship between Pam and Duncan, both of whom learned that with each other, they're not alone. And this is proven when Pam leaves Trent to reconcile with her son, proving that in between, they're in this together. Following the film's final shot of footage is another Edie Brickle song, Go Where the Love Is. It plays right after Pam abandons the place where love was false for her, and instead ventured to where the love was. Seems pretty appropriate if you ask me. With that, the story and its soundtrack are complete, yet both stay with me. They complement each other in such an intentionally intelligent way, and I think it's because of the tale that Rash and Faxon were able to tell with their screenplay the same way the soundtrack was with a careful selection of songs. Now sadly, The Way Way Back is anything but a world-renowned classic. It did just over 20 million at the box office and received no major awards or nominations. That said, I hope that its soundtrack will continue to help it live on and find more home viewings. Because The Way Way Back is the perfect example of how to do music in a movie. And how to do it right. Well,